Hi everybody, uh, I'm going to do a review of this past week and month uh, or so of the micro WTI crude oil contracts um, and basically just seeing what's been happening with the price over this past 30 or so days um, and particularly this past week um, but basically just uh, do some charting and graphing and general understanding for everybody. So for starters, the key price level was been around in this level right here. Um, there's also been a price level up in here uh, and a bottom of this level kind of down in this range. And I'll change that with a yellow. Um, so as we're doing this charting, we can kind of look at different phases of where we are at. And we're actually kind of at the bottom of the uh, mid range area. Um, so in terms of where we are right now. So overall, since July or so, uh, prices for oil have been falling. Um, they were reaching up at uh, almost 107 uh, level, and right now they're at uh, $86. Um, so basically it's been dropping quite a bit, um, but there was kind of an upswing. Um, we're mainly gonna look at uh, September, uh, August and September, um, and basically compare what's been going on and kind of look at these peaks and valleys and have a general understanding. So perhaps uh, this past month, the highest value uh, was right here on, I guess that would be 830. Um, so just about September 1st um, was the highest value. And then it basically dropped ever since then. Now the lowest value was probably right about in here. Um, and this was just recently on 98. Now, interestingly, the MACD shows a lowest value right in here, so I'm going to identify that as a different lower time frame. Um, the MACD actually aligns, if you notice, a little bit closer with this big negative spike in the volume that you saw right in here, um, interestingly enough. And the high for the MACD was right around in here, um, and I'll just identify that as 829. So you'll notice with both of these, uh, both of these happen after major, so the high happened after a pretty major uptrend, uh, and the uh, low happened near pretty, pretty near a major downtrend, so yeah. However, if you look at the line here, you can see that this negative point here was perhaps just as low, um, and it's probably worth pointing out that point right in here on, 815. So this is just general charting that we're doing, uh, just looking at the major points of this past month. Now you can see on the volume side of things, we did have a pretty negative spike right in here. And I'll drop that one here. It doesn't really show up, uh, except for when you see this drop right there, you can see a very negative spike there, followed by a pretty positive spike afterwards. Um, and then a pretty good size positive spike right in here. So that was a pretty good positive volume. Now let's just double check that with the main volume one. So you can see that yes, there was a pretty negative spike here and there was actually pretty positive spikes back in here, but there was also a negative spike in here really tightly. But these positive spikes all came in a row right in here, which is where that other Clinger volume shows up so you can see there you can see that that was probably the best one um, to identify but there was actually a higher volume on the positive side right after that big downtrend uh, which sometimes you do see the ATR average two range indicator is one of my favorite indicators you can see that the average two range was pretty much highest here um, at this point and that was definitely during that uh, negative spike trend that we saw there um, and then the low point for the average two range perhaps happened right around in here so you can see a whole lot of nothing going on basically right in this region here and that's I'll just do that whole region as a lower region you can see there was not even a spike during the positive part of the day it was just pretty low uh, in general now, in terms of money flow, um, we can see that there was a definite uh, downtrend here followed by a definite uptrend. So this is a general, looks like an uptrend here in the money flow, but there was a very sharp 
negative right in there. So that that was a pretty low point um, in general. Now, if you look at it, the chart, it does show that the positive was in here, but the money flow just quickly exited right after that high point. So it just really sank down, um, which was interesting to see on the uh, oil chart. So I'm just gonna draw a general trend here that we've been seeing. We saw this trend here. And then we see this trend here. So this is kind of a channel that we see on the money flow. And then we do see kind of a channel on the money flow going down here. So that pretty much broke right around in here and changed. So you can kind of see that there was some money kind of starting to go back into the market here, but it still kept dropping. But it didn't really start to come back into the market until here, that's for sure. So this, this point is gonna be stuck in here for a while because this drop was very significant. Now let's just check that drop on the MACD and you can see just how significant that drop was. That drop was perhaps the most significant drop for the entire month was right recently. So that, that really took the oil prices down. So the interesting thing about comparing these two drops is that this drop was a much faster drop from the high point to the low point. It includes a bigger delta because you basically have the highest point of the month going down to almost the lowest point of the month, right? This is perhaps lower, um, but that's because it was already pretty low on the MACD line and then it just got really sank in. So uh, technically this was a lower drop, but this is a lower collective drop. Uh, and you can see when that kind of hit was right about there uh, is when that started to go back up again, which actually it's on the red line right about there. So that's the point. So interestingly on this volume, you can definitely see there's a downtrend here and perhaps a level trend of peaks around that level, right? So you can see we're definitely dropping in volume. Uh, so less and less people are starting to agree with this price. Uh, and there's perhaps even an uptrend here. You can maybe start to argue there's an uptrend uh, starting right around in here, um, but it's uh, really debatable because this drop was so significant uh, recently. So on a longer term time frame, it looks like that we're basically starting to go towards an uptrend. If you look at this here on the MACD, you can see this point here and this point here. So we're basically making a little bit higher highs um, these patterns of uh, this is becoming a more of a pattern up this is becoming an up pattern here and then we see a pretty significant uptrend here followed by a downtrend so the problem is that it's been pretty negative um, essentially since about uh, well it really since since this point which is uh, June 10th um, but uh, basically only until recently has it actually started to go up which is around uh, 824. Um, so basically, and then you saw this tendency basically heading back down again uh, after uh, 830. So that channel that we drew on the higher time frame basically corresponds to this. So you can kind of see here that this is the top part of that channel and this is the other part of that channel. Um, and if we move back to the higher time frame, you can kind of see what happened here. So this, uh, I moved this slightly between there to there to just kind of uh, so technically the this part of this this part of the channel didn't quite show up uh, the same way on that but it does kind of on this this chart here so you kind of see that 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 peak here I just moved it up a little bit um, to include uh, these this peak as well but anyway so there is some evidence of a possible turnaround uh, particularly on the daily chart um, you can say uh, that you know the MACD does look like it's kind of turning around. However, in recent months, or recent uh, this recent past month, uh, since uh, September first, you see that the MACD has crossed over, and we have, they actually have been going down significantly, at least recently. So, according to these this channel, though, we probably should have seen a turnaround here around nine seven, but we didn't. So we still, if we go too much lower then we know we're definitely in trouble, but we probably wouldn't hit too much lower than this on this uh, channel line. So you can also see that it is a green here, meaning that it is starting to curve back 
towards the red uh, signal line and then towards the white uh, line, uh, the zero line uh, for the MACD. So in the volume profile here, we can see that most of the trading was actually done up, up, up at the higher levels, around $93. Um, so you can see that down here is actually on the lower end, but it is kind of making a point uh, at around $86 or $87. So that's pretty close to $87 right now. So it could flutter around right in this region for quite some time. So it is surprising that it made it so low down to $82. Uh, that would have been an excellent time to buy. Um, I did try to uh, get in on this area. So on the volume side of things, it's really important to point out this particular region. I'm going to do another vertical line here. Uh, let's do it back in pink again. Um, so this was a pretty negative uh, volume in here. So you can see on the volume down here that that indeed was a very negative. In fact, that was the most negative for the whole month. So it's important for us to not forget that that was a very important time um, in terms of historically, it was perhaps as important. Well, yeah, so this was perhaps more important, this downtrend here. So this downtrend here, uh, the news around 830 and whatever happened in that region is perhaps the most important for this past month. Uh, so one easy thing to do is to check uh, the news. So if you move your cursor here and you see where that negative point was, which is right around 8.30, you can go look at the news on that particular day on Wikipedia. And here happens to be the news. So what you do is you do current events, uh, 2022, August 30th, and you can see there's Iraq political crisis. Um, there's basically some problems in Iraq. Uh, and also Persian Gulf crisis, uh, Iran captures American unmanned ship. Uh, so there's basically some problems there. There's also the Ukrainian conflict and some other things. So you can look for month or day, and then you can do, we can look at the whole month of August and see what all the events were for August. But uh, basically this gives you a general overview of every single day, um, but anyway. The other day we might want to check is this uh, 9.7. Let's go ahead and do that as well. So not a whole lot of news on this date, um, but you can see here we got uh, some more uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, war uh, news, and then you have a counteroffensive. Um, so primarily it looks like uh, Ukrainian-related uh, problems uh, for this recent uh, disasters. That just affected the stock market. So uh, I just realized this. Unfortunately, we've been looking primarily at the problems here uh, and where has been the solution. So interestingly enough, the day afterwards, uh, perhaps right around in here, I would say we really started to do better on 9.8. So it's an important time to look at as well for news. And it looks like some sanctions were issued against Russia uh, about the invasion of Ukraine on September 8th. So that's maybe some good news. It might help close out the war uh, and things like that. Uh, so it's really a debate uh, back in here what was going good. So you might have to say right around 816 was perhaps uh, things starting to get better. Um, you can see there's a downtrend here and then fall at 816, things started to get better. So this is a weird thing. It, I noticed in the time frame is like right after the 16th, so it's probably 17th. Um, but you can see inflation is starting to get bad, um, and people are noticing that. I guess saying that it's uh, something to be particularly concerned about. Um, on the 16th, you can see uh, a bunch of disasters, uh, political problems, uh, and then of course the war in Ukraine. Uh, as well as some uh, other problems around the world. So, but basically maybe some of those are starting to be aware of and then maybe by being aware of them, the stock market will get better or something. Uh, so it is a really big debate about what's going on in the next uh, couple weeks versus uh, months. So if we use the month uh, notion, we can kind of see that this, uh, if we draw a line here, we can start to say, uh, make some estimates about what's been going on. So recently, quite recently, things have been getting better uh, in the oil market. Um, and you can also see even from here, things have probably been getting better except for this recent drop. 
Um, so this was a pretty harsh um, drop ever since. Actually, it would, looks like about uh, 9.5. Um, so, but basically, uh, you can see that, um, you know, by some estimates, you could say that if you use a long term estimate, this looks like a down arrow. So, it's slightly down between peak to peak. So, if you measure that peak or the MACD, in this peak, it looks like it's down slightly. So, that means that uh, the, uh, the, the comeback wasn't quite strong enough um, to even make this peak here. Um, it would have to be a little bit higher uh, to make just to. Uh, to question this other peak here. So this might not be enough. So we might see some still downtrend um, in order to get, um, we might make it up further, but we might not even clear this point, uh, at least based on this. So we might have to see some downtrend or uptrend again um, before we really start to question whether or not we can reach the $96 uh, barrel level. Uh, so on the other side of the equation, we do see that we have a triple bottom, maybe showing some support um, at this low level here. So we couldn't see much lower than $82 a barrel. Um, it just doesn't seem like we're getting lows that uh, we'll be able to get that much lower. Um, we might see, uh, at least on the MACD side of things, that's pretty much where the MACD ends. It is about one uh, negative one on this. Now perhaps an easier way to do this is to just draw a horizontal line. Um, let me do a horizontal and change the color again to say a blue. We can compare uh, highs and lows on this so you can say well, the high is about there which is 0.6 and the low is about also 0.6 but maybe not quite as low. So maybe around here you could say 0.5. So um, if I was fair between these two, I could maybe bring these down a little bit more. Um, so it is pretty close, but you can see that the highs are doing slightly better. So in the next month or so, we could see some trend upwards. Uh, in general, this looks like a little bit more on the positive side than the negative side. Um, but you'd have to measure it precisely, but this is just a quick way of doing that. Now we can also do the same thing for volume. We can say volume has been around at this level, which is uh, 1,533. Uh, and then you can say this one has been here. So definitely on the volume side of things, we've seen positive volume. Certainly a lot more positive volume. Uh, so that would definitely give us a sign that we have uh, basically uh, better months, a uh, better month ahead of us. And I think it's pretty clear from the money flow that we have here, if we draw some lines like we drew here, we can see that this looks pretty positive through here, this channel uh, heading up through there. So depending on how you draw these lines, there's a lot of different lines here. Sorry about this. I'm gonna try to erase some of these, but this channel more recently heading back to, uh, you know, the start of September here, really looks like a, we have a channel essentially looking pretty positive with the exception of this really big drop. So why this was so far out of the channel pretty much goes back to in this range. You can see right in here, we had a drop below the channel. So that was an early warning sign that we might have something coming up uh, that would be worse than we would expect. So interestingly, uh, the volume, uh, the cleaner volume oscillator probably gives us the best idea for what we might expect. Um, we could change these views. I have a particular one just for volume um, that I like to look at, and I can see if this will load up here in a second. Uh, but you can kind of see uh, the forces here. Uh, this is a uh, elder force index. You can see we had quite a lot of force negative here, quite a lot of force negative in here in this region. Um, it's basically the volume. Uh, this combines both the volume and the uh, price. Um, now this is the Elder Ray index uh, and you can also see here that we had uh, some pretty negative territory back in here and some pretty negative territory in here but we're kind of building on a pretty positive streak here um, with the exception of the last couple 60 minutes. Oh excuse me. Kind of dying down uh, in some of the volume here that we see might, might expect. So the general volume oscillator um, you can kind of see if we draw a line here, it looks like it's kind of dropping here and then it's actually went up and then it dropped again here. So 
that's kind of a bad sign. We saw some maybe positive volume change up in here, but this was not really in the direction that we might hope. Uh, it was looking like it was actually more volume, but it was definitely heading down. So this is a problem right here. You can see that the volume was dropping here and uh, we were going up in price, but then the next day the volume went up and the price went way down and then the volume went up even further. And so basically most of this was due to, due to the previous day and maybe just the fact that we we're just losing volume. Uh, but in the whole downtrend, we're losing volume, which is actually a good sign because when the volume's dropping, we know that there's not that much assurance that the price is correct. So the price is probably incorrect as it's dropping here. Not a lot of people agreeing with it. And last but not least, looking at directly at the volume itself, you can see that definitely it did drop and then it went up here it's pretty significantly. Uh, like we talked about and then it's been kind of staying at this average level right around here um, which is basically peaks at 14k trades per day um, or some or excuse me per 60 minutes I think this is yeah so at, at a peak uh, so basically uh, the daily chart will probably be quite a bit different than this you can see uh, daily trades at about 85k or so 85k is basically about about average for the oil so just a few more last little tidbits that we'll look at so you can see on the rsi which is a price only indicator that we're kind of like at this lower end of the rsi block so we've been quite low for some time and then only recently have we actually kind of caught up oh with some positive rsi activity there um, and if we compare that with, say, the Arun indicator, which kind of tells us if there's been a lot of highs or a lot of lows, you can see that the Arun also has been primarily below zero. There's been a lot of uh, negative, just a couple of spikes in here. Um, but uh, the Arun is basically saying that the trends are primarily negative. Um, and then you can see from a stochastic, which is similar to uh, just checking max maximum highs and maximum lows um <coughs> when you see a possible turnaround recently on the daily chart um, potentially for oil so pretty much every indicator on this has shown uptrend here on this uptrend and an uptrend also on the rune and you can see the macd is also showing uh well why did i have this macd like this so I wanted, to, usually I use MACD of 8, 16, and 16. I do this because the time that takes light to reach Earth from the sun is eight minutes. So I just like to use those numbers. Um, and it gives me a little bit better visibility on the MACD as well, so I can see exactly what's going on. So, but yeah, you can see that in general, the MACD has stayed pretty positive. There's been a couple turbulent areas in here on the MACD, and then recently there's kind of some turbulence. Um, but yeah, so we might expect just a slide up uh, from recent times. So I hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, I've used primarily E-Trade for this, but you could also use Thinkorswim. Um, I just like the ability to write on the charts pretty easily. Um, with uh, E-Trade, it's pretty simple for me. Um, there's also a way to do it with uh, Thinkorswim. But uh, anyway, so, uh, but here you can also see the MACD oscillator. Clean your volume oscillator and a chinkin money flow oscillator. Um, but anyway, I hope this has really helped you understand what's going on. Uh, let me know if you got any questions. Um, so I would say one final comment is that the uh, volume profile probably is most helpful in predicting where we're going from here. Um, it looks like we'll be up at about $89 uh, per, uh, and then maybe at most about 93 um, but we'll probably maybe split the difference, maybe head up to 91 uh, and then maybe come back down or go back up. Who knows what will happen? Um, but it looks like we got some fill in to do around 91 that we could potentially do that um, or just hit uh, the 89 levels and then kind of re-see what the world news is and various situations are from there. So again, I hope you really enjoyed the study. Let me know if you got any questions. Uh, please like and subscribe and let me know what kind of ideas you have. I'd be glad to talk these over with you. Thanks so much. See you.